In this video, you'll be learning how to create this 2D simple flat widget in Fusion 360 in both the model and cam workspace for the CNC plasma cutter. After you have saved your file, because that's the first thing you should do when working in Fusion, we're going to add a new component. I'm going to call this Component 1 for now. And then go New Sketch. We'll be sketching on this bottom plane. We have our X and Y axis. Rectangle tool at the origin. And then go over 4 inches for the X. Tab over to go 4 inches in the Y. Enter. And we now have a 4 inch square line. I'm going to draw a line here to here. Notice that it ends right at the outside of the square. Right click OK. T to trim. Trim away that geometry that we don't need. D to dimension. I'm going to dimension this leg right here at one inch and this one will also be one inch. Sketch drop down menu fillet. We're going to round this corner one inch. Notice that's a little bit too big of a radius, so I'm going to deselect that corner by. How do I do that? I'm just going to press escape, go back, undo. There we go. Sketch, fill it. I'm going to go ahead and fill it this radius at a smaller amount. Let's go half an inch, 0.5. Same thing for right here. 0.5 and let's see how this looks 0.5 there we go so that's a nice smooth transition with the bigger radius right here enter O to offset we're going to take this geometry and bring it in and offset it about 0.75 we'll go three quarters of an inch enter this part has really no mechanical purpose, just a random geometric widget, if you were curious. Circle tool, I'm going to draw three circles. Notice these three circles are not exactly lined up and not exactly the same size. I'm going to dimension my first circle with a diameter of 0.25, and I'm going to make all three of those the same. You can dimension this and type in the value, but that's a little repetitive and not very parametric. The best way to do it would be to link this to the first dimension if they're going to be the same size by double clicking on that dimension and then clicking on the dimension that we want for our kind of target derived dimension. So that will be dimension 8, enter, and now I can dimension that again. Click up here or simply just type in D8. An alternative way let me back it up with the undo button, would be using the equal constraint. I'm going to make this circle equal, equal, equal. And now when I change the value of this circle, it updates the existing ones. To align these up, first thing I want to do is center it. I'm going to use this inspect tool to measure the distance from here to here and it's 0.75 D to dimension we're going to do half of three quarters so you can go 0.75 and it's kind of cool if you don't like doing math use this little input box as an actual calculator so 0.75 divided by 2 that gives us 3 eighths 0.375 that gives us our center dimension down here notice these circles look like they're lined up but they're off a little bit and I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint to make them lined up. I could dimension each one, but this is going to be faster to make this circle. Whoops, what is going on here? Horizontal vertical, slowing down, there we go. Repeat that. You should now be all locked vertically. As far as the spacing, we're going to go ahead and put one inch in between each hole. And 
And notice these holes are now kind of locked together, so we need to figure out a good placement. And what we're going to do is just eyeball it right about there and then go dimension here to here. And we'll just call that 0.75. To replicate these three holes down here, we can recreate what we just did or go to the line tool. I'm going to draw a 45 degree line. I'm purposely going to make this not perpendicular to this edge. I'm going to use the perpendicular constraint located right here to make this line now 90 degrees to this edge. And I'm going to turn it into a construction line. Go to the sketch drop down menu, mirror. I'm going to select my th three objects. It actually already has four objects selected, so I need to deselect this mirror line. So back to three, then move this down to the mirror line and click on that. And now I have my three circles mirrored across that line. Stop sketch. I'm going to go sketch, fill it once again. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. Oh, I didn't want to stop the sketch. Once you stop a sketch, you go down in the bottom and edit that sketch. Sketch to get back into it. Fill it. I'm going to fill it these corners. So I'm just going to leave that right there. I want this radius to match. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to measure this radius. Looks like it's a radius of 0.25. I'm going to go back to our fillet, double click, 0.25, enter. And once my 2D sketch is done, I'm going to stop this sketch, press E to extrude, click on your surface. I'm going to change this to a 3D view so you can see what's going on. I'm going to pull this to make it a 3D solid, a thickness of 0.1. I'm going to click OK, save, and we now have a 3D solid model. Now it's time to hop over into the CAM workspace to program for the CNC plasma cutter. We're going to start with our setup, change this operation type to cutting, and we're going to put our stock box point at the top bottom left corner. Use the right hand rule, X to the right, Y away and Z always pointing up. Our stock is going to have a side offset of not one inch because that would be wasteful, 0.1, zero on the top, still relative size box, and hit OK. Go to the cutting operation. First thing we need to do is select our tool. In your tool library on your left side you'll have samples. We want to select this. Notice there's a bunch of tools. Most of these are milling tools. What we want to do is go to operation type, make it cutting. Click OK. This is going to filter our tools and we're going to select the .04 plasma cutter. For right now this tool is close enough to what we use. Cutting mode is going to be auto and then the cutting feed rate is going to be 80 inches a minute for our cutting feed rate, lead in and lead out feed rates. Switching over to the geometry tab, typically we always are going to go top to bottom and then left to right through the tabs. Geometry, going to select that surface. That will automatically select all our individual chains. We could individually select all these, but that takes time. Notice the arrow. That arrow indicates which side of the geometry the cutting tool will be on. So we want the arrows to be on the inside. And if you go back and just select that surface, all our arrows typically are always on the correct side, but you need to verify. The Heights tab is pretty much fine with all the defaults. Same thing with the Passes tab. And then linking, we're just going to hit OK. It's good just to see a toolpath first and then go back and see what's right and what's wrong. So looking at our part in our toolpath, we have an entry coming down, cutting out this, leading in with the green. Yellow is a rapid where it's not cutting. It's going to cut out that, and then it's going to come over here. Notice it is not going to cut out the circles. And if we look over here, we have this warning. If 
But look at this warning. It says one or more passes were discarded due to linking constraints. Basically, our lead in at the default setting is too big to fit inside this hole. We need to go into our 2D profile, right click, edit, go to our linking tab, the last one, and change some of these parameters for our lead-ins. The default values work on larger parts, but for smaller, more refined pieces, we need to tweak these built-in defaults in Fusion. We're going to change one thing at a time. So we're going to take this lead-in distance of 0.9 and make it 0.12, a little bit smaller, and see what happens. Notice we now have our lead-ins inside our circles. We're going to bring this V a little bit closer together, make it more perpendicular with what we're cutting by going back into our linking setting and change this to 90 degrees. We're going to run a simulation up here on the top. It's kind of a little joystick looking button. Click on that and then we can simulate our cutting path to make the part. You can also turn on the stock, turn off your model. Sometimes you want the toolpath on or off. We're just going to look at the end result so we can see we got our lead ins, our lead outs, everything's looking good. The only thing that would be a concern would be the drop pieces. So these small pieces are going to drop through and they're super small and they're not going to matter. This piece right here can possibly be a concern. We don't want this piece getting tilted because it doesn't drop all the way through and possibly causing a collision with the plasma cutter. So we need to add a tab to this inside piece. We're also going to add a tab to this outside piece because maybe we want this piece to stay connected to our stock and we're just going to break it off either with pliers or you can twist it off to keep everything from dropping into the water table. This is really important for small parts. Big parts, not so much. Going to close our simulation. Notice all I see right now is toolpath. Sometimes this is a thing that happens when you come out of the simulation. You're like, oh no, my part's gone. Make sure you go back to your browser and turn on the visibility of your model. So we're going to go back into our 2D profile, edit. On the geometry tab, we have a box for tabs. These will hold our pieces into the stock. Typically, I prefer doing tabs by points. The default is by distance, and we can see we have one tab, two tab, three tabs, and right here. That would technically work. It's a little overkill. We definitely just want one tab here and then one tab on the outside. So we're going to position these at points, which is kind of more manually. So I want one tab here. Notice Putting a tab in here would make it difficult to grind away and deburr, so we're going to put the tab on the outside in a flat section that's easy to access. The tab width is important. Depending on the thickness of the material you're cutting on the plasma cutter, the amperage that it's set at, and the feed rate, sometimes if your tab widths are too small, they're just going to melt away. This 0.1 setting on thicker material will melt away, so we're going to go 0.15. That's a little bit bigger tab, and that will still hold our parts in there. We don't want our tabs to be too big because then you're going to have a difficult time breaking off the tabs. Run another simulation. You can turn off the tool. Sometimes the head of the tool gets in the way of what's actually going on. So here we can see our tabs. They look really big, but actually in real life this part is rather small and they will be small enough just to break away with some pliers and some twisting. I'm going to close that, save, and then the final step would be to post-process your G-code. Before you post-process, you need to have the post-processor for the Techno CNC plasma cutter. That is a separate video card in the corner for you to check that out. You need to make sure that post is installed before you post process for the plasma cutter. To post process, we're going to basically take all this visual information and Fusion is going to turn it into G code. Post process, I'm going to go to setup, 
but first make make sure you have this selected post process setup I'm going to use my cloud post because that's where the techno plasma post processor is saved program number I'm going to call this one two three four you can also give it a name but program comment will be plasma bracket for YouTube YouTube YT there's some additional settings in here that can be changed but we're just gonna leave this as default click post and this is where you would save your post process G code file on a flash drive I'm just gonna put mine on the desktop it can later be transferred to a flash drive and we have this brackets editor that's going to have our program name and all our numerical code that will create the part on the plasma. That's it in Fusion. Everything else is out in the shop.